Arxus says, no grunt for the whole month, succeeded, grats. Yeah, well, admittedly, I, I, I started only after a week. But um, a week into it, I went, no more grass. I had, a, I, had a, I had a week of being like, yeah, I'm, I'm the best player of poker in the world, to I'm a terrible player and I forgot how to play, to oh, I'm really good at poker again, to oh, I don't know how to play again, to you know what I mean? I was like, why am I getting, why am I doing that? Like, it's all meaningless over 150 games, like, just nothing, you know? So I actually found it incredibly relaxing just being like, what was the, like, how was the games and how are my decision making? Brilliant. Large question. <laughs> Good. That was a that was a sound effect that we hadn't uh, got rid of yet. Let's go play another hundred. I'm pretty sure you forgot uh, a buying or two. Um. Yeah. Check. I guess. Interesting spot. Maybe to bet sometimes. Uh, we'll get called by certainly ace, ace high king high spades. Maybe some nine eight. Maybe. I think check calls is pretty reasonable here. Obviously, we'd love to pouse up. But maybe goes check, check, and we win against King 10. I don't feel too lightly. I mean, it feels fairly check X easy to have here. All flush draws, sure. Glatchungle says Tomo, do you think the hundreds will become softer once some of the regs finish their Diamond Club Elite grinds? Yeah. Um, Promise Dumb Club Elite starts again, you know? So this is the challenge that you're always kind of waiting for. I, I don't think, I think it won't be that impacted. Because also Diamond Club Elite is kind of spread around a bit randomly, you know? I mean, like, you can start any time. And so for some people, they start straight away and then, uh, like, early in the year, some people start later in the year, and yeah. I think um, it will have a limited impact, if I'm honest. But I like the hope, as Freddie says. Nice to have hope. Hopes, or just nice to hope? Nice to have hope, that was correct, by the way. You were spot on there. Nice to have hope. To have hope, it is nice. Some of the recommendations are 255, so maybe they go in search of those games again. I see what you're saying, yeah. That's possible, that's possible. We get donked into small here. I think raising makes sense with this hand, uh, and, and this SPI. If we were much shallower, would be absolutely fine. But yeah. Rancho Hossa! Bienvenue, bienvenue. You are most welcome. So I think three quarters seems a sensible sizing here. I think there's a decent amount of jackets on our opponent's range. Some 7x, some 3x as well. 6 4? Yeah, I don't know. So it's pretty tough. It might be, but. There we go. Jack X. Ooh, ace. Oh, no. That was the hand before. <laughs> okay. To be fair, I, I kind of want to keep uh, Ryan's hands hidden from public display, so I'm going to look at that later. But you will never get to see it. That's the team That's the team 601 privilege. You, you join 601, you won't see the replay on stream. I stayed hard, thanks to Jenny, eh? Pretty good, huh? All right. Ooh, 6.5. Scary, scary, scary limp. This is an aces, is it? It's not aces. I've run into aces quite a lot with an ace here. It was not aces. But there's an example, by the way, of the power of um, confirmation bias. Oh, they always have it and they go, well, I'm not going to remember the times they limp fold. You should remember the times they limp fold and not just remember the times they have kings. Very easy to remember the times they have kings and go, oh, they always have kings. No, nah, they look fault sometimes. You look like Grealish, the player. Well, is that a compliment? Thank you, I think. I mean, it's a professional footballer. You're not gonna, you're not gonna be unhappy, right? Any, any professional footballer will, will take looking like that. Jam it in there. Where's the jam it in there? Jam it in there. Oh, we got called. Fuck's sake. Oh, we hit. Can we hold? No, that's enough of the celebration, I think. It is, po I mean, that is a possibility. I'll, I'll take that, Galactic. I see your thought process that maybe someone who's playing 250s, 500s is like three quarters of the way there. 
and they just got to play a little bit more and then they're done and then they'll go play something else. It's possible. It's possible. Uh, maybe they'll play Reg Speed after. Yeah. Hard to say, hard to say. So yes, there's also that said, go big or go home and ask if moving down was acceptable option. I think he's kind of right. Depends on the situation, obviously, you know. Why, why do you think that, Freddie? What, what, uh... Tell me, tell me your thought process. Someone bought a new toy sound machine. We've always had that. We've always had the toy sound. What, what? Hang on. Because we got... Looks very bluffy. Looks very bluffy. Looks very bluffy. We got the... Remember Just folks, remember, King folks, Boroth. King Boroth is a, is not these a are all gem. seminal moments in Team 601 and Twitch history and cemented forever as part of the show because aces. Who can forget that? Who can forget the <laughs> from Nick? Who can forget the bastard from Trujori, who's now been suspended from Twitch or something. Uh, that's mental. Oh, right. That's, that's like if Jack's like sort of happy, and if he's very happy, Ooh. as we know. <laughs> nice. Good, isn't it? Pretty, I think this would really add to your stream if you could get some sound effects, please. I've heard that, I've heard a lot of people being like, I'd watch Freddy, but he hasn't got sound effects. We better should we check? I think check's pretty cool. I like check because when we do improve, it's a lot of cards that are perceived as more favourable to our opponent's range and therefore, uh, I mean, it doesn't make too much difference. It's just a little thing that kind of can be quite cool. Again, check or bet. I think I like check again. We have a pretty standard bluff on a lot of rivers. We do have a lot of 6x. I mean, that's definitely a part of our range. So if we go check, check. I mean, if it goes check, we bet because I mean we don't have tons of hands that have no shot on here we get bet into so we just fold with five high <laughs> legacy says I prefer your heart give me the fucking ball mate that was the one proud moment there phrase is because missed opportunity I think someone should just play the big stakes they beat for one year when taking shots at 250s I was just in and out uh, everyone telling myself no money up there Stay at hundreds. But it was just variance and with time I missed a lot of value not playing them after small dancing. I do think you're right. So I think there's something to be said where there's a balance to be had. So um, getting to a situation where the, the challenge you have is you have to be confident enough to know that you're kind of long term winning in the game. And so um, this is why I think a lot of people, if they played higher stakes and they have a winning sample and they move down, the game seems incredibly easy and low stress because they know they've won it. Like playing hundreds is a lot easier when you've had a winning sample at 500s and 250s because you're just going to have more confidence. You know, what I mean, it's like I'm, I'm going to win long term. Like, yeah, you know, but if I'd never played those and I'd played 50s, even if I had a good winning sample at 50s, it'd be like, oh, but maybe I'm not quite ready. You know, and so there are just additional challenges that come with that. So I think you're right in terms of that kind of mindset, that mentality, and, and making sure that we're in a situation where we can absorb uh, kind of emotional volatility of the game uh, in a suitable way. The challenge, of course, comes um, sometimes people shouldn't play a certain state, right? Sometimes the, the win rates are too low, and actually you do end up costing yourself a lot of money. So you are right that whilst Dominate, look at this, dominating, although somehow we're still behind. How did that happen? Great flop, though. Um, so I, it's about getting the bounce right. Let's say you were, especially, for example, if you're self-rolled, and this is where it comes in, into account with staking as well. So if you're, if you're on your own bankroll, it certainly may be somewhat more sensible to play at a state where you're kind of like have that level of confidence where you're like, okay, I'm... I know I'm winning at least, and, and the better my chip EV, the better my EVROI, the less impact on the bankroll required. And it makes a big difference, because if you're playing, let's say the difference between 500s and 100s, right? And if you need a thousand buy-ins to play the 500s, or you need 300 buy-ins to play the 100s, you're talking of a difference there between 30k and 500k, <laughs> right? 
And that's a big chunk of bankroll that you can use to invest in whatever you want to do that otherwise have to stay somewhat liquid. Uh, you know what I mean? You can't put it in a house and then play 500, right? Um, so there are opportunity costs that come from playing higher as well as playing lower if it's your own money. Um, I agree though, I agree that the mindset uh, is certainly something to, yeah. I think if there's, if it's defi if it's definitive and you have the confidence that this is your max EV game, you should probably play in what is your max EV game. Um, and I'm someone that's been probably more erred on the side of, ah, I'm gonna play a little bit lower where no one winner is good. And it took me a long time. Actually, 601 helped. That's probably the one best thing 601 did with me was like, just play higher, Tom. You know what I mean? Like, stop trying to play low stakes, you're fine. So I can thank them a lot for that. <laughs>